in the quest for more horsepower, you have to talk to the valve train expert. So we know, that, John, that camshafts, that lift, that load design are really important for creating that area under the curve so that you can get more air into the engine so you can make more horsepower. But how does this lifter play into what this camshaft is trying to tell that valve to do? Well, I think the lifters in the old days used to be one of the hardest parts to keep in the engine without problems. Yeah, they tend to have failures, right. especially the flat tappet right. lifters. And in right. the flat tappet, you can only increase this ramp at so a certain far. rate because then otherwise you're running at the edge of the lifter. Right. But going to a roller wheel solved that problem because it lets you be more aggressive on your lift curve, correct? Yeah, and, and the other thing with the flat tappet, the amount of break-in time that yes. a team would have to do was critical, mm -hmm. and if you didn't do it right, you had a failure. So with, right. a, with a roller cam... I we, know a little bit about that, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and, and the roller cam, first of all, it's made of a different material. It's hardened. The, the lobes are around 61, 60 to 62 RC, right. so it's real hard. So therefore, you have to have a matching roller component. Got it. Okay? And, uh, the hardness of that wheel has to be close to the hardness of and, the cam. And, and actually, these are harder than that. Okay, okay. harder, okay. Well, then these have needle bearings in them, and mm -hmm. we'll show you the difference between, this is the new black Mamba lifter, which uses no needles at all. So it's a bushing okay. style versus the needle bearings. Well, when you say bushing, most people put a small piece in here mm -hmm. and then a steel axle. Okay. Where our whole half-inch axle goes into the part. So the wheel actually rides on this axle. Okay, which okay. is nice because that's not steel. So being a bronze piece, this is actually kind of self-lubricating better than steel. And I also see some holes in here too, which is yeah. kind of crafty and genius. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you on the screen. Yeah, go for it. Well, first of all, <clears throat> we make two both for Chevy and Ford. Right. And these two lifters are actually made different. On the your project engine with your dad, yep. we're using the Ford. Yep. And what the Ford is, we had to relocate the key so it wouldn't be right in the oil passageway. Got it. And then we had to offset where we're bringing the oil in. I see that, yeah. Okay. Now, we made bushings through CRE. Okay, okay. yep. And they, did a, they do a wonderful job, but when people think you can just use any bushing, you want to have all these different cutouts inside a groove all the way around where the oil hole is so the lifters will work properly. So you get the proper amount of oil. Right. Uh, proper lubrication, if you don't know, is the four R's. Right oil, right place, right time, right amount. And what I'm seeing is this piece is all about those four R's, the getting Correct. that stuff where it's supposed to be, when it needs to be, right. and enough of it. And so, like I say, the, the bushing for the Chevy lifter is different. So, right, because the, me, where the actual key is in a different location and exactly. the oil holding is right. a different location. And if, and if you noticed uh, here, I can see it. The, yeah, the key here is in line with the roller. Mm -hmm. On and the there's Chevy, offset to the side. It's in line with the axle. Right. Okay. Now, part of this bushing is that you have to have that key, right? With that, with, with a key, right. you have to have a bushing. You can't run a keyed lifter in a standard bore without having the bushing in there. Well, and as an example, this is a small block, I mean a big block Chevy right. tie bar. Tie bar style, yeah. And you see the curve because mm -hmm. on a Chevy, they got two Offsets. different angles. Right. And what we call is this isn't done correctly, you get a washing machine action, mm -hmm. which you don't want. No. Well, once you go to a key lifter, everything stays perfectly in line with the camshaft. And you want this to be in line properly with this cam, not like this mm -hmm. or this. And so the geometry has to be right. right for it to actually work. And so when you and have longevity. And that's why. Today, with the new machinery, mm -hmm. you can not only, when you bore the block, then move over, bore the lifter bore, and we want about a two thousandths press on this okay. part. You bore it, go down all through the block. You have another tool you just insert to press this in. And if you notice, there's 
little keyways here. I see here, that, yep. And that's to put it in your fixture in the mill so ah, it goes in. Okay, locates right it on the mill properly. correctly. Nice. So the way this works is your oil pressure is coming from your oil hole. Yep. And it surrounds and goes into these slots on both sides of the lifter. So you have one on this side and another one on this side. Right, and those are matched up to the oil holes right. in here. So right. you get the oil going down the gallery is being distributed to these oil holes that then feed into the lifter. And if you notice, look inside, you'll see a one groove all mm -hmm. the way around where yep. the oil hole is. I see is. that, right. And that's just to ensure getting oil everywhere. Now, it comes down through, here's the deal, it comes yep. down through the body into the axle and there's a V. Mm -hmm in the center here. So it goes from the down into the V and back up, up to 12 o'clock. This is 12 o'clock. One, because when it's sitting there, mm -hmm. you gotta get oil into this. If you had it the other way around, it's gonna be difficult right. to get the oil. And at that point, it's essentially functioning like a plane bearing, like your an cranking, engine bearing. Yeah, engine bearing, like a cranker or a rod journal bearing, it's the same thing, it's riding on a wedge of oil as opposed to riding on the needle. Yes, that's correct. Now I want to give you a comparison between Ooh. a bushing and a needle bearing. Now, if you notice, you see arrows to one, two, three needles. Correct. That's carrying the entire load of the bearing. Got it. Now down here, these represent the points so you, stress. if this yep. is your, uh, these are your points, these are called Herdian stress points. Yep. But you have a very thin part that it's riding on. Right. Okay, so now with the bushing axle, we have 40% of oil in here mm -hmm. on a half inch diameter axle versus a 360. So you go about 100 times the load carrying capacity right. with this new part. Yeah, so if you've got, say, 500 pounds of open pressure pointing down, all that 500 pounds of load is actually being concentrated on these three, three little bitty areas, which sends that pounds per square inch through the roof versus 500 pounds of pressure now being distributed over a half inch radius over right. a much broader area so that load color goes, goes way, way down. Up. Yeah. Now, the one thing is people say, well, I have a bearing that has... More, I made the needles smaller so I could get more needles in. Okay. You're still yeah. on three needles. That's exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we can make this, bore this bigger and go to a bigger roller mm -hmm. or another roller. But the problem is impact. In other words, there is an impact that you, when you hit, either you float a valve and it comes down and hits, yes. you don't want this wheel to crack. Right. Okay. And we've seen that before. You, you've, I have seen flat spotted needles because of that, because you get that valve float right. and it's, hit, it's hitting and now you're flat spotting those needles and once they flat spot, they stop rolling, they start skidding and then you see all this failure and sometimes people say, oh, it's, it was, the oil was too slick and it wouldn't allow it to roll. No, your needles got flat spotted, probably because you didn't have control of your valve train and it was bouncing all around. And, and the one thing is, uh, like on our product line, we make three different levels of axles, needles, and, and wheels. Mm -hmm. And you put those in what power level you're going to do. So the parts here, now if I take, this is one of our upper level 842s. Mm -hmm. So this has an excellent wheel, needles, axle. Right. But it can't do what this does. The right. other thing the load bearing capacity is just simply not there in a needle setup versus what a bushing right. setup is. Plus, guys are taking their race engines and they're on the street. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens on the street? Well, you have to idle if you're at a stop sign. Yes. And that is the highest load on a, on a roller bearing. Oh, you're is right. Is idle. So right. now we fixed it with this. Yeah. And so, and all these parts are rebuildable. That's what we do. Yep. But the, uh, anyway, this gives you a good comparison between. Uh, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you, you can see visually 
Right. This is happening. not a lot of load bearing area. There's a quite a bit more load bearing area there. It makes total sense that, yeah, for street applications, when you're gonna run a lot of seat pressure because you're gonna run big valve springs because you've got this giant engine that's got all these heavy parts in it, it makes it better sense to have a bushing lifter like this that can hold that load. Yeah. And I guess too, that, that wheel diameter is also kind of nice too for the camshaft to be able to get that- Absolutely. Ha have more control and less dynamics. Right, and the, and the thing, is this is a what we call an 850 wheel, mm -hmm. but we also make a 910 wheel, but you can't fit oh, wow. a 910 wheel with a 936 diameter, which right. NASCAR requires. Yep. Plus NASCAR would not approve of the bushing. this yeah. for a cup. Right. But anyway, we that's where we- Fortunately for my dad's engine, it doesn't have to my, go back through tech, yeah. so we can do what we kind of want to do, which is kind of nice. And the one thing is, is when we started developing this, we actually, ran this at Martinsville uh, at an infinity race. Okay. That was, I don't know, four years ago or something. And, you know, it was legal to do it, but we wanted to show that, it's yes, you, could, you can make it through these RPM ranges, blah, blah, blah. So the other thing is, <clears throat> this is a DLS coating on top. Oh yeah, of it. exactly. Having that and, uh, coating on the body makes a massive difference in terms of well, the longevity because DLC is essentially a dry film lubricant that imparts, you know, boundary lubricity and, ex and extra anti-wear protection essentially for that component uh, in the event there was a less oil available. I yeah, when, startup and things like when that. When we get a um, cup lifter back for a rebuild, mm -hmm. you can't tell that it was run. Right. It is unbelievable how these teams keep the oil clean. They preheat it before it's starting. Right. And and that's the one thing I I do hear. Well, what clearance do you recommend? Mm -hmm. Well, oddly enough, people always have a friend at Cup. So they Everybody. know somebody. Yep. And they'll take one sentence out of a big system yep. and say, "I'm going to do that." And right. you just have to be careful, folks, because. That is such a controlled environment. It's a complete yeah. recipe. And oh. if you don't follow the whole recipe, you're not gonna get that, the outcome. That's correct. So anyway, we're, we're real pleased. These have been out for about two and a half years now, and we've had great success with them. And uh, this is why I wanted to put these in your uh, dad's engine. All right, we appreciate yeah. that, because yeah. this is the good stuff. So we've, yeah. we've gone to all the links, right? Keeping the same block, heads and manifold, but inside we're trying to do all the upgrades we can, you know, from the CP guys giving us new pistons, obviously Total Seal's done some new rings, we've gone from a you know, big thick ring to a really small thin ring, from iron to steel, made all those material improvements, which is kind of great because we're the same thing. We're going from the old style stuff to the new style, different materials, right. better coatings, that same process. And, and hopefully we're gonna see some good results for it. And hopefully you guys can see the results when it's done. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not gonna listen.